Greetings demons and welcome to a discussion about Fortnite but more specifically Fortnite's crossovers and collaborations that it's had over the now 16 seasons that we've had of the game. Now obviously we're in season 6 of chapter 2 now so we're not actually through with season 16 but at the same time we already have a pretty good understanding of the kinds of crossovers that we're going to be having this season and more specifically we already know of three that are just in the Battle Pass alone, which is kind of ridiculous, though I'm going to get into why it's not as bad as it may at first seem as we get into this video. I'm also going to be making a few counterpoints and also just elaborating on various points that iTalk, Nick from iTalk, actually made just because I feel there's some points that he actually made that were a bit inaccurate overall. So I think it's best to start with the first crossover that we actually got and now this is disregarding any of the sport crossovers so obviously in season 4 we had 8 football skins, season 6 we had 8 NFL skins but ignoring those because technically they are branded in some way but they're not actually full on crossovers season 7 actually brought us our first crossover with Marshmallow now this was in line with not really much other than the fact that we were actually getting a concert. Now, a lot of people really enjoy Marshmallow's music that play Fortnite. A lot of people were really excited about Marshmallow actually being in Fortnite. And it's one of the most popular sets going in terms of crossovers, which to me is kind of surprising. It seems as it's not really requested to come back as often as other sets we're going to talk about. But Marshmallow was introduced in Season 7 and generally is a very beloved pack and that was, as I say, the start of this whole crossover in Fortnite phenomenon that we've seen absolutely explode. So the next few seasons we saw a handful of skins mostly from various other movies and TV shows. We saw stuff from Marvel, John Wick, Stranger Things, Borderlands, DC, Major Laser even came by with another concert and a skin. And then it came to season 11, the first season of chapter 2. And this is when things, in my opinion, really started to explode. We saw six skins from Star Wars, which is a huge franchise. It's one of the biggest out there, as well as another skin from DC and the introduction of the first creator skin in Ninja. We saw major reveals for the new Star Wars film, Episode 9, actually first appear in a Fortnite event, which is kind of remarkable now to think about it. And also, there was so much other stuff going on in terms of just advertising within the game. In fact, I do believe, though I do not have it written down to check, but Season 11, I do believe, is the season where we got the IT crossover, which was legitimately just a crossover in terms of a balloon in a grate. It wasn't even a skin or any items or any sort of challenge pack. It was literally just an item from the film appearing in the game. Now, obviously, after that, in season 12, we saw a lot of Marvel stuff, as well as the first major concert after Marshmallow in the form of Travis Scott's Astro World. And Overall, I think people really enjoyed that, but this also saw the introduction of something that a lot of people don't really like. This was the first season to have a secret skin be a crossover. This was Deadpool, of course, and I actually really like this as a concept, and if it hasn't been continually repeated over the next few seasons, I don't think I would have had an issue with the fact that Deadpool was a secret skin, because I am very much someone who loves Marvel, but at the same time, I really wish that we'd got more Seven skins. I'm a huge fan of the Seven, and the fact that we've only got four of them so far, and one of them isn't even out yet, that being the Foundation, it's kind of annoying that we've seen so many in Battle Pass, especially Secret Skin, crossover items. And it's not really an issue that I have overall, I quite enjoy the crossovers that we get, but this was a really dangerous first step that Fortnite made into upsetting a large amount of the community with the crossovers. Obviously, in the literal next season, we saw Aquaman 
also be the secret skin, though secret is in huge quotation marks for that season. We literally saw him in the trailer. Fucking Aquaman! Which arguably Deadpool was in the trailer, but it was much more in the background. Aquaman was front and centre, and for a lot of people that was just a step too far. Which I can completely understand. It's not like with Deadpool where, you know, you could infer that it probably was Deadpool, you could see Deadpool, and you know, there's a lot of funny jokes about Deadpool being in Fortnite. With Aquaman, they literally just made a joke about how he wasn't wearing a shirt, and that was it. And as I said before, I don't think the community would have been as annoyed with the secret skins being branded if it wasn't every single season. The next season was a complete Marvel themed season. Once again, the secret skin was Wolverine. It was a branded secret skin. And a lot of people really didn't like that season due to the fact that it was nothing but crossover skins. In total, that season, chapter two, season four, we saw 33 crossover skins. Breaking that down, that's two from DC, eight from Ghostbusters, though they were reskin defaults. 14 Marvel skins, which an insane amount were actually from the Battle Pass. We also saw J Balvin, Lachlan, and eight NFL skins, but they're lesser in terms of the overall hate that crossovers get, and generally I don't think they were much of an issue. Of course, that brings us on to season 15, which blew season 14 out of the water with 37 crossovers from Alien, DC, G.I. Joe, God of War, Halo, Marvel, Predator, Star Wars, Street Fighter, Terminator, The Walking Dead, Tron, Gref G, Laser Beam, and another brand new set of eight football skins, which Compared to the original football skins, they were based on countries. The new ones are specific teams, which arguably are much more of a brand upon themselves compared to the original, which were just based on countries. And quite honestly, even I think that season 15 went overboard in terms of its crossovers. We had 53% crossovers of all skins that came out that season. All the brand new skins, 53% were crossover skins. That's insane. Especially it seems as we normally get, even in seasons like season 14 where we had a ton of Marvel skins, we still had a nice variety of actual original skins. It's incredible to think about that so much of season 15 was purely just crossovers. And finally, of course, that brings us on to season 16, chapter 2, season 6, which is our current season, where we saw three skins in the Battle Pass alone that are crossovers, from DC, Tomb Raider, and once again, the secret skin, Neymar Jr. Now, I have no issue with pretty much any of the crossovers that I've stated. I actually really like the vast majority of them. There's odd ones that I'm not interested in, but I can definitely understand why people would want them in the game. Characters from The Walking Dead and Street Fighter, not necessarily for me, but I can definitely see why people would want them. But it is getting a lot. And a lot of people, including Nick, I talk Fortnite, or I talk as he's now referring to himself as, do not like how much of the Fortnite ecosystem is crossovers. And... At the end of the day, it is very much a case that people look at it as just being, oh, Fortnite's just becoming an advertising strategy. I mean, it's to the point where the biggest grossing until very recently film of all time, Avengers Endgame, featured Fortnite for a decent amount of screen time. It was only a short scene, but that is still a noticeable amount of time for the highest grossing film of all time to show your game. Not to mention the previously stated the information that was in Fortnite for Star Wars Episode 9. It's an absolutely insane amount of crossovers and it's only going to get bigger. We already know of at least two other crossover skins in terms of DC as we're getting a brand new comic line in April. 
and that will include a brand new version of Harley Quinn, which is a character we already have, and a brand new version of Batman, who is a character we already have two skins of. It's not slowing down any time soon, and it's honestly kind of scary. I'll be showing the graph right now on screen that I've been making over the last few months of all crossover skins, as well as all brand skins, which includes licensed sports, other brands like McFarlane Toys, um, and also Nike Jordan, stuff like that, as well as comparing it to the amount of skins that are actually in the Battle Pass. And you'll notice it wasn't until Chapter 2 Season 2 that we saw any crossovers in the Battle Pass. And since then, other than with the exception of Chapter 2 Season 4, it has been consistently rising at a constant rate. Season 12 and 13 both saw one. Season 14 did see eight, arguably, which is a huge jump. But then Season 15 saw two and Season 16 saw three. Now, if we completely just disregard Chapter 2 Season 4 as it was legitimately 100% based in a crossover, you can see that the crossovers are only rising in the Battle Pass. You know, 1, 1, 2, 3 is an increase, steady as it may be. And seems as 14 had 33 total skins, and then 15 had 37. I can't help but think that this season, Chapter 2 Season 6, Season 16 of Fortnite, is probably going to have over 40 crossovers by the time it's done. And so far, we've only seen three of them. As I've said, we're going to definitely be getting two more this season in terms of DC skins, and that's at minimum. So, currently we know for a fact there are going to be 15 total skins this season that are from crossovers. It's rising so quickly that it's hard to keep up with, hence the fact that I've been making so many graphics and so many just explanations of the content. I care heavily about crossovers in Fortnite because I generally think they're a good thing for the overall experience. It's great that I can play as a Stormtrooper from my favourite franchise, or I can play as any number of Marvel characters, or even characters from other video games that I really like, like playing as a Psycho Bandit from Borderlands. All these things are things that I really, really like. But even I have to look at it and go, maybe it isn't best that we're replacing actual original content with crossovers. At the end of the day, if I want to play an Alien game, realistically, I'll go and play something like Alien Isolation. If I want to play a Terminator game, I'll play the recent Terminator game that released. It's the same thing with a lot of these crossovers. There are games that exist for most of them. There's very few exceptions to that rule, most of which really just being things like Major Lazer and Marshmallow, which are just popular entertainment brands. Now, to begin responding to what Nick said in his video, I would just like to say the idea that Fortnite skins that aren't crossovers are being run less is mostly inaccurate. You've made plenty of videos yourself, Nick, that show that the most popular skins are in fact not crossovers. Sure, crossovers are definitely up there, especially the early ones like Mandalorian and 4. They are very popular to be worn, but so is any Tier 1 Battle Pass skin. It's just how they work. And at the end of the day, you've said it yourself that many of the most popular skins are actually skins from Fortnite crew, which, with the exception of Green Arrow, are all exclusive and also original skins. It's an interesting dichotomy to state that crossovers are the prominent skin when you yourself have debunked that. And unfortunately, another point that I kind of have to argue with is something that I have already mentioned in this video. Nick, the chances that there are going to be less crossovers this season, just based on the statistics, are very low. This season has already started with the most other than season 13, other than season 14, of any season in terms of Battle Pass collaborations. 
and it's only going to go up from there. As I say, we're only one week in, and already we've seen that we're definitely getting five, two of which have released, one of which is the secret skin for the Battle Pass, and two of which have already been announced as coming in April. It's very questionable to say that there's going to be a vast majority of original skins, and this is by no means saying that Nick is actually overall wrong, that we are going to see more, compared to last season at least, because the chances are we are going to see a lot more originality alongside the crossovers, because they've seen the reaction to a vast majority of crossovers in the item shop. But I can't help but say that you are wrong to suggest that the crossovers are going to just fade away this season. They're an integral part of Fortnite now, which Donald Mustard himself, in the video that you cited, did also state that crossovers are part of the story, definitively. The idea of crossing over with other worlds is integral to Fortnite's lore, and to imagine that they're just going to slow down the crossovers now, when that story beat is already well implemented, it's kind of dumb to think that way. And finally, the last point I really want to argue with from Nick's video is that the whole idea that crossovers are best when they're sparse, it is kind of incorrect. You yourself got excited about the Street Fighter collaboration last season, and that one was in the middle of many other crossovers. So clearly the excitement doesn't get dulled by them being constant, but it's by them being varied. And I don't know whether you meant that in your original statement, I just wanted to make that point that last season was so much better in terms of crossovers to general people, general players, because of the fact that every single other week you were getting something completely different, with the exception of the Marvel and DC crossovers, which they are the top crossovers for a reason. Which, side note for those wondering, the most skins by franchise, it's 27 for Marvel, there's 11 in DC, 8 in Ghostbusters and Tron, and then 7 in Star Wars. They're all the top, and, you know, it makes a lot of sense we literally had a season that was Marvel related, but that's just a side note, I just thought it would be worth mentioning. But, yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about for this subject. I know this has been a very long-winded discussion, and I hope that Nick I talk doesn't take offence from any of my statements. I'm meaning nothing by it. I've been a long time subscriber and viewer for a very long time. And I just thought that there were some points that I really needed to explain and also argue with because there were just statements that were just kind of incorrect in my opinion. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Luna Rainbow Flag, Happy Pride, Rabbit with Facts, Streamer Let's Play, Take them out like dinosaurs. FNAFA, troll, not the leader of a cult, rabbit with sacks, it's Luna.